In this video, we're going to build a Movi-style professional camera gimbal at a fraction of the cost using the BG001 gimbal frame from UAVmediapros.com. The BG001 is pretty much a direct knockoff of the Movi M5. It is a high quality, professional duty frame made by Famous Hobby in China, and it easily rivals the Movi for build quality. Although it does have some notable improvements such as the molded handlebar set, and as a bonus, it comes in a CNC cut foam packing that can be later used to line a suitcase or a road case for transporting your gimbal. It has quick release clamps on most of the adjustments in order to facilitate quick camera or lens changes. It also has a quick release at the top so you can quickly swap between the handlebars, a jib, a zip line, or your drone. On this particular build, we're going to be replacing the stock camera support plate with a Manfrotto plate. I must note that there is a provision for mounting an IMU on the stock camera plate that works just fine. But in this case, we would like to put a Manfrotto plate on it so that Doug can use it to quickly swap between his tripod and the gimbal. And here's a shot of the Manfrotto plate that we'll be reinstalling. Again, assembly of these gimbals with the supplied camera plate is a lot quicker and much less effort, so don't think that you need to use a Manfrotto plate. The stock one works just fine. On this build, we're going to be using the Phobotic Centerpiece Controller card rather than the stock offering of the Alex Moss card, as we feel the Phobotic is superior for professional use. By using the Phobotic card, we can make this gimbal truly competitive with the Movi for use under professional conditions. So let's get started. We're using a piece of 1 8 inch 6061 grade aluminum flat bar that we bought at Home Depot. We're going to make a cheese plate to mount our Manfrotto plate and the quick release adjustment clamps as well as the IMU. Here we see the parts laid out and our cheese plate drilled. Doug attaches the cheese plate to the bottom rails using the quick release clamps that we scavenged from the original camera plate and installs the Manfrotto plate. Then a quick test of the balance of the Canon 5D to ensure we have the plate in the correct location. We're using an off-the-shelf electronics box from Hammond. I'll put links in the description below. I like this box because it's large enough to fit all the connections inside so that nothing can get bumped while the gimbal is in use. Hammond makes this box in black as well, but for this build, as it is a demonstration model, we will use the clear box. Having built several of these gimbals, I've found the best location for the battery mount is right below the yaw motor, as this presents the lowest rotational inertia. We modify the yaw motor cage by replacing four of the screws with some stubby M3 standoffs to attach the famous hobby battery tray to. And here we see the finished battery mount. With all the hardware done, we're ready to start installing the electronics. Here Doug is installing the IMU on the cheese plate that we made earlier. Next, the Manfrotto base plate is installed. And here we see the completed assembly. Okay, time to wire it all up. After installing the Phobotic card, we use twist ties to temporarily hold the wiring while we decide on the cleanest routing. Next, we cinch it all down with small black zip ties for a clean look. And here we see her all wired up and ready to go. Next comes the critical analog balance process. This is by far the most important part of any gimbal setup and is a lot easier with the use of our quick release clamps. The camera must be absolutely perfectly balanced on all axes. In this way, inertia does most of the work as the camera naturally wants to sit in one place and the gimbal can rotate around it. The better the balance, the less work the motors have to do. On a properly balanced gimbal, you can get away with much lighter motors. That's how we can get away with 60mm motors on this gimbal while running this full frame Canon 5D Mark III and the massive 16 to 35mm lens. A properly balanced gimbal will also use a lot less current and your batteries will run longer. I would say at least 50% of the problems that people experience with DIY built gimbals is due to improper balancing. 
Once we get the pitch and roll axes balanced perfectly, we can concentrate on the yaw axis, which can be the most difficult one to balance. Here we see Doug adjusting the balance of the yaw axis. By tilting the gimbal, it will roll one way or the other, indicating whether it is front or back heavy. But it can also be left or right heavy, so balancing the yaw can become very complex indeed. He adjusts the gimbal a little bit further backward to balance the forward and aft. There's more to do, but it's looking better already. After about 30 minutes of working on the yaw axis, we see the gimbal in perfect balance. This is how well balanced your gimbal must be in order to function optimally. Now the motors only have to do minor corrections rather than moving the entire weight of the camera. Remember, the camera sits in one place and it is the gimbal that rotates around it. Time to install the battery, check the wiring and run auto-tune. This is where the Phobotic centerpiece gets to shine. Phobotic was one of the first in the industry to introduce auto-tune that actually works, and it's only gotten better with time. In this case, we're doing a one-button tune rather than connecting it to a computer. Doug holds down the main button for five seconds, and it goes into auto-tune. Note that you can also use auto-tune from a computer app using a computer connected via USB. I hope to do another video soon running through all the functions of the Phobotic app. Let's just speed this up, as this can take about 10 or 15 minutes. So let's give it a quick torture test to make sure the wiring is okay, balance is good, and the phobotic is functioning as it should be. Under normal operating conditions, it's unlikely you would need to compensate for this type of movement, but it does handle it without any problem. Here we see Doug breaking loose the phobotic control by moving the camera to a preferred angle. It will stay at this pitch until you reset it. This feature is very useful when you need angled shots. And here we demonstrate the yaw follow mode. This mode enables smooth panning with gentle easing in and out at the end of each travel. The dead band, the rate at which it pans, and the easing are all adjustable in the Phobotic app. All other axes can be set to follow mode as well, if desired, but usually it's only the pan that you'll need. And again, a bit of a torture test. And here's some test footage that we shot immediately after the auto-tune, with no further adjustments.